Hello, good morning, good evening everyone. I've received a couple of requests to do a video about add-ons that I'm using, so I thought maybe it was about time. I'm also going to include the macros that I'm using here uh, so that I can give you the full picture of my setup. Now, just before we start with the video, I'm going to push ranking after having upgraded all my gear to 226. It's been a blast, by the way. Uh, as of the next uh, European reset. So if you are bored, if you would like to support me, please do not hesitate to tune in on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash TV. And also, if you like this video, if you like the content that I create on YouTube, please do not also uh, hesitate to subscribe to this channel. It would really, really help a lot. So um, without any further ado, uh, thank you very much for the, uh, for the support and uh, let's go into the real content. So in terms of add-ons, so we're going to start from top to bottom. The first one that I'm using is called Bartender 4. So as the name implies, it helps you move all the bars wherever you wish. You can customize it by uh, adding or removing number of buttons in one single bar. You can of course also uh, put directly put keybinds on the buttons. You can also show the name of the macro or remove it as well. Uh, basically, you can like resize it as well. It's really highly customizable. If you need something to uh, adjust your bars, Bartender 4 is extremely good. Battleground enemies. So this one helps you gives give you an insight about what is the composition of the enemy team in BG and RBG. So for instance, I'm going to toggle the test mode of this add-on and here you'll be, you will be able to see that on 15 players, these would be uh, the composition of the team and the class and the major CDs that they are using. It's extremely important to have this in RBG because it gives you an indication of the health pool of the enemies and therefore, uh, indirect level of indirect indication of their item level. So with this information, you can already give in advance to your team, which would be the main targets you would like to focus, which heal, which DPS, and eventually if the tank is really geared, uh, if you can drop him down really fast, if he's carrying the flag and things as such. So it helps gives you, it helps give you insight uh, on your strategy making at the beginning of your RBG. So really self-explanatory, uh, there's when you activate and download it, there's also a part, uh, a second table uh, that shows the same information, but for your team. I have removed it because it's not really useful. Uh, we have usually already our own uh, party frame, right? So we mainly need to see what is going on on the enemy side. So uh, I'm going to stop uh, the toggle here. What's next? Uh, classic number. So this is, <laughs> I have received a couple of comments on that one. So the damage that you see here is made via classic uh, number and it's just a matter of aesthetics. So the bl light blue is frost damage. The white damage is uh, melee, melee hits. And then the yellow damage is pure physical uh, damage. So uh, for instance, if the obliterate is not under um, killing machine proc, then it will be in yellow. It means that the armor takes more into account in that damage. Whereas if you proc, um, if you manage to proc uh, killing machine on those one, then the obliterate will be turned blue. So uh, it's not super useful, but uh, I like the aesthetics. It gives a burning crusade wrath of the lich king vibe, which I like quite a lot. So uh, yeah, if you want, if you like it, uh, feel free to download it. Uh, then afterwards, uh, coordinates. This is really simple. Uh, you open your map, uh, you have an XY cursor. So really simple, self-explanatory. Um, detail. So this is the damage meter, uh, similar to recount. I have two boxes, one that gives the overall damage done by the team. And on top of that, I put one that is called my spell. So if you go there on the sword, you go on custom and my spells. It's a predefined one that already exists with the add-on. Then you can see the damage done individually by each of your spell. And if you put your mouse on it, you can see like the average number, the crit number, the number of hits. 
It's quite useful if you want to study your character more, if you want to, uh, to assess the evolution of the damage done based on stats. And it's also useful in practice because uh, when you do arenas and then you want to use a chill streak on the two target, you can see if it does quite a lot of damage. If it does a lot of damage, then it means that it's bouncing quite a lot. And if not, it means that you probably failed your setup and didn't manage to leverage the chill streak damage as much as you wished for. So that's pretty much it, very, very simple. Uh, what else? Uh, Gladius, Gladius, quite obvious as well. Uh, if you type the common Gladius test, then this would appear. So when you enter an arena, you can see which are the class of the enemies, uh, what are their CDs, um, basically what are their status, what are their trinket usage, uh, really self-explanatory. There are a million of guys already about the various uh, different versions of Gladius. Uh, I'm using the Gladius normal version, but if you want to use Gladius X or other variants, feel free to do so. They're mostly the same, just a matter of aesthetics. So uh, that's pretty much it for that. I'm going to remove the test, uh, Gladius test. Afterwards, we have Max Cam. So this one I like too, because I feel like the default uh, zoom of, uh, of World of Warcraft is quite short. I prefer sometimes to be able to see from further away, especially in RBG, for instance, you have a, 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 um, a boomkin hiding next to a house, like on the side of the corner doing a convocation spirit. If you're with your normal view, you don't necessarily see it, right? Wherever, whereas if you have a larger view uh, frame, you can better see what's going around. So it's better to give also indication uh, in RBG because you can count easier the number of people present if they are like trying to sneak cap the flag behind you and things as such. Uh, not mandatory, but uh, I still feel like it's good to have that. Uh, it's a plus. Now, one that is quite important is called nameplate cooldown. I won't be able to show you here unless I put an indirect footage on top of this video. But basically, if, uh, if I have a target here, so I see his nameplate, and I also see the icon of the target. It's not just for pleasure of seeing his face, it's also to see the status that, of the spell that he's using. For instance, I'm fighting a paladin, he's putting his bubble, then I want to see how many seconds left does he have of his bubble, right? So I would be able to see the bubble icon here, but I would also see the remaining seconds left before the, the spell vanishes or the turtle from the, the, the turtle from the hunter, the ice block from the mage, things as such. You can really pinpoint and see exactly when it's going to end. Also, for instance, if you're fighting someone that is bursting, for instance, if you see a DK using Pillar of Frost, then you would also be able to see that information rapidly here, and you can react by using your own walls. And on the opposite side, if you're hitting a priest, you see that they're using pain suppression, and you see that the other target is quite relatively low, then it's a very good time to switch target on that one that doesn't have suppression pain, right? So it gives you a lot of information, uh, very, useful in both RBG and PVP scenarios. Extremely good, I re highly recommend having it. Uh, very, very nice. Then afterwards, Omnibar, uh, I should use it, but I'm not because I already have too much information, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. Shared media additional fonts. So this one is just um, a, 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 an add-on that provides more uh, fonts to the information that you see. For instance, here, the Pepsi view that I have here is a font that I have downloaded like on Google. So you, you go on Google, you download the Pepsi font, and then when you have the, the other add-on, the shared media additional font, you just put the Pepsi font into that folder, and then you would be able to, all, all the other add-ons that allows you to select a separate font, you will be able to use the new one. So it's basically shared media uh, additional font has to be used with, uh, with the classic numbers if you want to have the Pepsi font. Uh, there are some guides on YouTube and Google. Uh, feel free to have a, a deeper look at that if you have any issue. Uh, else you can also drop a comment down in the video. I'll try to help you as well. Another one is thread plates. Thread plate is what I use here to see all the bars. So I like to have the, well, I really like this design first, but what is also really nice is that like when you target one among many, 
it uh, I can make so that it highlights with a like white border. So if you're in the RBG and there are many many melees or whatever, you're in the eye of the storm in the middle of the map next to the flag, there are many people, then whenever you target someone, you can already you can directly see who you're targeting really easy. And on top of that, when you do your DPS, you can see the status of your spell on the person. So for instance, when you see that this guy doesn't have your frost fever, then better put that frost fever. You see that those three guys have the frost fever dot and it helps you generate more runic energy uh, because well, it's always good to have dots on as many people as possible. So this, uh, this is what I really like. You can customize it as much as you see fit. I didn't over customize it because I'm not very that uh, I'm not that great at that. But uh, I feel it's very very nice. Like you can change the color, you can change the the tone, the the size of the bars. You can highlight the totems uh, if they are being put by the shaman. So you can switch easier on them. Um, I feel like it's a very nice one. I advise you to have it if you don't use anything uh, in terms of floating nameplate. And then afterwards, I think that we're closing, slowly uh, finishing with the list. We have uh, weak auras. Uh, I'm not using many weak auras. I'm mainly using one that gives me the status of the enchantment weapon that I have. For instance, if I have a fallen crusader here, I put two dual Y weapon. I'm waiting for it to proc. But basically, if you give me one minute, hopefully it's going to proc very soon. Unless I cannot, oh, maybe I ha I'm under the debuff where I cannot change the uh, off balance. Okay, it's in five seconds that I, it, that my weapon buff can appear. Up. Oh, okay, so just give me one second. I've created some um, some uh, weak auras that allows me to see what are the remaining seconds of my buffs and uh, uh, well, maybe my my burst and my buffs. For instance, if I use a uh, Pillar of Frost and uh, Runic and Poran weapon, then I can see the remaining seconds and I can start like doing my, my regular rotation. Here I have also a uh, Fallen Crusader has proc. I'm not using it normally because I'm just showing you uh, by using two um, single weapon. But basically here I can see this, the remaining time of my buffs and it's really useful, especially when you're in a specific burn, uh, bursting window. Uh, so not really special here the bubble and here the wall so uh, I would see the four information on top of my health bar and I can know how long I can last give that information to my partner if he's healing me uh, always quite useful to have that information so uh, okay with that being said I'm just going to switch back to my regular weapon with that being said I think that there is only a couple of add-ons left Z Pearl. Z Pearl is what I use for the unit frame here. It's highly customizable. I know that there are plenty of people that don't like it, but I've been using it since uh, Wrath of the Lich King and I've always liked it <laughs> personally. So uh, basically you can just like modify the style of the bar. It's really nothing crazy. Uh, what I also put um, in terms of configuration is that I put the target of my target in order to see which guy is this guy focusing right so if he's a dps in arena i can easily see for instance if they are cleaving two melees i can easily see which is their well who is their main target and i can call that information to the heal for instance okay my teammate is being focused he doesn't have his wall like keep an eye on him normally it's not necessary but it's always good especially if you're grinding uh rank at this stage and playing with vocal with a uh, a couple of friends that don't pay with too many add-ons and things as such. But even for your personal information, it's always good, especially in RBG, because you can start using your wall in advance and more. For instance, if there's a, a hunter popping with double tap aim shot and you're afraid to, to, to lose too many H point, HP point, you don't need to wait for them to hit someone to see who was the target. You can just directly click on him and you can see that, for instance, his target was yourself. So um, always useful, but Z Pearl in itself is nothing really incredible. I just like the, the interface style. So with that being said, we also, I think the last add-on I'm using is called Narcissus. Uh, I really like to have uh, this photo mode because this is basically what's, uh, this, it's basically an interface that al allows you to have a, a fancier version of showing your stats here, but also you can all uh, use it to take pictures 
if for instance i mean i'm using it to do uh thumbnails on youtube so here you can just like say that i want to draw the weapon i want to have the lighting more uh, on the bottom side and i can do a specific animation running and i can hide stuff in the behind behind as well and then you can take specific uh, screenshot as well uh, so uh, it's really nothing useful for pvp but it's just for fun so voila that's pretty much it that these are all the add-ons that i'm using for a pvp environment i hope that you like it and i'm probably going to put a couple of points related to uh, macros as well okay macros i don't use too many i think that in frost decay in general there aren't that many uh, one that is quite important is the slash focus really simple when you enter an arena i want to see who is the focus target uh, because it's going to directly impact the two next add-ons the first one that i use is um, this one that helps me cast uh death grip on the target focus so for instance if this guy is my target focus if i'm still focusing well mainly hitting this target if uh, the the focus target is uh, is sufficiently close i can just use uh, my 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 macro to death grip that person right for me it's a shift uh, shift grip so really easy on that level same goes for uh, mind free so here i have a specific dedicated add-on to uh, basically directly uh, kick the person that is on the side because he's my target focus. So most of the time I will focus a DPS, uh, I target focus a heal, and then for instance he's casting a heal, I just go there and I kick him and voila, that's pretty much it. Asphyxiate and blinding sleep. This is uh, just for, uh, it's just to, to make myself, uh, my life easier. So it's just that whenever you have, um, you, you choose between those two talents here. So basically this is uh, my F button with asphyxiate and blinding sleep. Whenever I click on one of the two, it directly changes in my, in my spell bar. So I just don't need to drag it, drag and drop every time. It's easier that way. Um, this is the same as the previous one. It's the, the uh, usage of asphyxiate on a target focus, but I'm rarely using asphyxiate as a spell. I prefer blinding sleep in both RBG and PV in, in, in arenas. Uh, big bubble, so big AMS. So this is a tool tip. I'm not sure that it's very good, uh, but I'm using it because sometimes I'm lazy. But basically when you use your AMZ, you have to click on the on a, on a specific place to put it, right? So instead of that, I realized that most of the time I was putting it on me, but later on I thought that it was not very true. I made an add-on so that whenever I cast it, it directly drops it on myself. So I don't need to click anywhere. It just pops where I am at the moment I click on the button. Mm, you can use it, but um, maybe if you, if you are having issues with your, your buttons at this stage in terms of uh, action per minute, uh, you can use that, else I would recommend still to um, click or do the, 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 the... I know that there are some other, well, some macros that allows you to like click on the spell and directly it's on, on the place where your mouse is. Uh, that you can consider, but uh, if you want to do that, you can also use mine as well. Uh, the most important is the burst one. So the burst one includes the usage of my uh, aggressive trinket. It's on a one minute CD. I cast Empower Runic Weapon, I cast Pillar of Frost, I cast Raise Dead, and this one, it was another trinket that I was using, but it's not very important. If you're an orc, then you can also put your racial uh, trait, active trait, in there as well. Uh, as long as it's not uh, in a GCD, then you can put everything together, right? Uh, this one is uh, not important because I have made another one. Uh, this one, Holding Blast. So uh, basically in Arena, uh, I put, this is my Holding Blast. I, I cast Holding Blast on the target, but at the same time, I'm always taunting the pet of each Arena player because I always want the taunt on me, um, especially if the, the, the Hunter or the Mage, or I don't even know if Mage Frost is still playing with the with a pet, but the DK and things as such, if they are targeting another target, then if I taunt the pet, then it will mitigate their target. So always very good and always put me in combat as well. So uh, kind of practical if you're playing against a rogue and things as such. 
So I put it on Holding Blast and Obliterate. So it's exactly the same, it's just the name of the spell that changes. Um, also, uh, Icebound Fortitude, not really important, I just use it for regular BG, but I use Potion of Defiance as well, but it's really not important. What is more interesting would be this one, the Leechborn one. Uh, I'm pers personally not using Death Coin in my spells, so I use it mainly to survive if I'm behind a pillar. Uh, so in that sense, uh, if I'm not next to anybody, I cast, if I press one time, I just click on, it activates Leechborn. But if I have sufficient runic power and I click a second time, that it will just automatically heal me with the death coil. Because here, I said that the target should be myself. So you put the name of the your player down there, right? And uh, I think that's pretty much it. The rest is not really useful. I think that there's this, just this last one, Wrathwalk Death Pack. It's exactly the same one that I'm using for Asphyxiate and Blinding Sleep. So the button is here. Well, when I change talent, the button here automatically changes as well. It's just to make yourself a bit easier instead of dragging the spell all the time. And with that being said, I think that's pretty much it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, thank you very much for the support lately. If you want to see me live, please do not hesitate to come and see me on uh, twitch.tv slash xenogartv. And uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.